Have you flown out of an Indian airport? Or since the pandemic, chances are that you've heard of Digi Yatra, a voluntary service which claims to help you whiz past airport security processes and board your plane faster by scanning your face and linking it to your boarding pass and other personal details. Digi Yatra has crept into 14 of India's largest airports and to say that it is hard to miss will be an understatement. Social media is flooded with accounts of passengers complaining that they have been deceived, tricked, hoodwinked and even arm twisted into signing up for DG Yatra. Some even claiming that they were denied entry to the airport if they didn't agree to a face scan. A study showed that 30% of registered passengers flying out of Delhi airport didn't even realize that they have signed for DG Yatra. Many of us have been ag babula over airports thrusting DG Yatra into their faces. But what's the fuss about? I have wrote this script to break it down for you. Welcome to Digi Yatra Crash Course. All you need to know about it in 5 questions. Question 1. Ye Digi Yatra kya hai? Ye Digi Yatra. Digi Yatra was freshly rolled out in 2018. Passengers were expected to download Digi Yatra app and register before their travel with Aadhaar or driver's license. Today, that requirement has flown out of the window and with one-time Digi Yatra sign-ups which can happen on the spot, say at the entry gate of terminals by merely showing any ID and getting your face scanned. This is how a large number of passengers, including me, got ambushed into signing up. I thought I was simply showing my ID and ticket to the security personnel when the screen next to him took my photo and processed it before I could process anything. Not to say that I've processed anything since like... 21st December 2023 Issues with data protection aside, Digi Yatra most fundamental pillars of user consent, dignity and autonomy ka bhi game baja hai. And baat yaar khatam nahi hota hai. You have no time to fight it because they're using the greatest weakness against you. A long queue behind you and passengers, including the uncle who judged you for your stressed jeans when you got out the cab. And there's also a good chance that you will all miss your flights if you are in the Second question is who owns Digi Yatra and what do they do with our data? My top two question of all time. DY was started by the Union Ministry of Civil Aviation and it is backed by government authorities. But it's confusingly run by a private company called the Digi Yatra Foundation. So who owns your data? Technically, the Digi Yatra Foundation, through the app, the DYF collects your identity and contact data, biometric data, which includes your face, business information, technical data such as passwords, images and videos, and any other data which DYF can add to this list. That is a lot of data. And if you think about it, business information and other biometric data such as form for your Aadhaar really has nothing to do with what DY is designed for which is to help to get your plane faster with just your face. So what do data ka kya karo ye? What a company does with your data is governed by its privacy policy. If we closely look at the privacy policy, which IFF has done so you don't have to, but you should if you have time, they found many more concerning loopholes. The privacy policy allows Digi Yatra to collect, store, process, transfer and share a passenger's personal information with third parties or service providers for many purposes which includes marketing and promotions. So when you sign up for Digi Yatra, you also agree to potentially be spammed by not just Digi Yatra, but its secret affiliate third parties who will know a lot about your travel history. Additionally, it states that it will share information to the government authorities when it is required to prevent or detect a crime. Remember this, we will come back to it later. While the privacy policy explicitly allows for your data to be shared with third parties, but when the ministry launched the Digi Yatra, its policy states that the data collected under Digi Yatra cannot be used by any other entity since it is encrypted. The contradiction here has been not been addressed by the ministry or Digital Yatra Foundation, which creates more questions than it answers because one of them is lying. Kisi ko to kawa kaatega, someone spans are on fire. There is also ambiguity about what kind of personal information is shared from a passenger's smartphone and how it is used by the Digi Yatra app. The ministry claimed that the Digi Yatra process, there is no central storage of passengers' personal data. All the passengers' data is encrypted and stored in the wallet of their smartphone. 
it is shared only between the passenger and the airport of travel origin and is purged from the airport system within 24 hours of the departure of flight. But DUI policy states the airport operator will retain the travel data including the Digi Yatra ID travel credential for a duration of 30 days from the date of travel after the passenger flight departs and that the union government can have access to the information when required. So whose pants smell like smoke by these reports all cover by injuries to IFF because we would like to know. The question we care about the most is question number three. How can I know if my data is safe? Well, that's the catch. I have says that we're not sure you can. There is very limited transparency when it comes to data flow and privacy of Digi Yatra. Well, that's expected because DYF is a private company which is not mandated to reveal any of this information like public authorities would be under RDI Act. Smart because technically Digi Yatra is a, is a government-backed organization. Anyway, Digi Yatra Foundation team and its CEO have gone out of their way to ensure that they routinely conduct data security audits through a government agency called the Computer Emergency Response Team of India or the CERTIN. It is a special team within the Ministry of IT that looks at cybersecurity vulnerabilities in public and private databases. But again, there is no way of really ascertaining that. It's been over five years since Digi Yatra came into our lives. Neither the CERTIN nor the foundation has published any cyber security audit on their websites yet and we citizens cannot ask for it because get this CERTIN, a government agency was exempted from the RTI Act very recently in December 2023 on account of being a security and intelligence organization under section 24 of the RTI Act like the CRPF or the CBI so we don't really know what's going on which is scary because it's our facial biometric data on the line the follow-up question that arises is, do you and I have protections against misuse of our data? Let's first look at the laws that can give you a safety net in the case of data misuse. Right now, there is no data protection law in operation in India that can protect you from the data misuse or breach or give you remedies. The Digital Personal Data Protection Act has not been enacted and won't really come into life until the end of 2024. At least till that happens, we're on our own. Even when the Dupper Dupper A uh, comes into play and its procedural rules are not notified, it still may not be able to adequately protect your sensitive personal data of Digi Yatra users, specifically facial biometric data, for two reasons. The first, Section 17 of the Act holds power to exempt Digi Yatra and its data processing authorities from its very application at any given time. If such exemption is invoked for the Ministry of Civil Aviation or Digi Yatra, even basic privacy provisions like consent before data sharing or breach notifications will not apply to Digi Yatra users. Second, the DPDPA does not classify sensitive personal data as a distinct category needing additional safeguards and caution. It is globally recognized that biometric information such as facial data is incredibly sensitive and processing it leaves users like you and I in a vulnerable position. So even if the act applies, our facial data given to DY will hardly have appropriate privacy safeguards. IFF has also written to DYF but never received a response. The last leg of this video is FRT may problem what is the harm with FRT. The problem here is that Indian law enforcement agencies love relying on facial recognition technology for crime detection or even making arrests. But FRT is widely and globally known for being inaccurate. Sure, we'll fix the inaccuracy rates, but even if you make it 100% accurate and you have a precise tool for round-the-clock surveillance without your knowledge or consent, FRT and biometric surveillance does not operate in isolation. The government that partly runs Digi Yatra also runs many other databases and can easily draw a 360-degree pro profile of you, your movement, your socio-economic location, and even record your descent from when you attend protests all by a single tool of FRT-enabled surveillance. But we're not here to scare you. We're here to empower you and arm you with information so you can decide for yourself. No airport staff should be able to force you into registering for Digi Yatra and compromising your privacy. Use our Know Your Right leaflet for all this information and useful tips to avoid Digi Yatra at airports or simply show up wearing our cool merch as airport fits. I would, you know, I would like to mention that IFF not only did the research for this video, but Disha, their associate policy counsel, wrote this script. She couldn't be here to shoot the video, which is why I'm here.
Point is, IFF made this video and this information being in public domain possible. Please donate. Kar do. Chat made digital rights. Ka chalosh, hum maintain karenge.